hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Pony Talk Podcast. Great to see you all here for another fantastic and awesome podcast. I have someone finally joined with me. We have Rainbow Dash 47. Say hello to every pony. What's shaking, guys? What's poppin', Jimbo? All right, for a brand new podcast, and I forgot to introduce myself, so as always, I am your awesome host, Dashy101, and uh, today, guys, we have episode 11 of season 9, um, so, yeah, uh, this is student, student council. council, yep, uh, <laughs> yeah, this, I, I gotta say, this episode I really found interesting, um, despite the fact Oh god, I'm going into that again. Um, despite the fact that this is uh, episode 11 of season 9. Um, but, yeah, so... I We haven't really gotten too many um, Starlight Glimmer episodes, and I think this is like the first one, am I correct? I'm pretty sure I'm correct. Like, just focusing around Starlight. Um, probably in a while, but although I'm pretty sure she had some episodes she, in previous seasons too. But well, in probably... previous seasons, I know that, but I'm like saying like this time in uh, the first, this time in season the nine. First yep. one of her this season. Mm -hmm. is, yes. Uh, so. Yes. All right. Um. Yeah. So this this definitely was a good episode. Um. But yeah. Uh. And the, wow, I even know Josh, uh, writ, uh, written this podcast, or, why did I say podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Josh written the podcast, guys, so, uh, yeah, we're just, we're just on a roll. I'm sorry if I am, like, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's, that's what kind of happens when, um, I'm a little bit energized, and I did a lot of things today, okay? Um, uh. so, yeah, it's one of those days, and, uh, again, sorry if I'm just out of it today, guys, and sorry if you're hearing background noises, too, uh, supposedly they're having fireworks go off tonight, and then my FaceTime's going off, and then we have the beautiful highway, which, uh, that doesn't change, so, oh my gosh, who is calling me at this time? What? So, someone's FaceTiming me, and I literally cannot answer it. <laughs> so, um, I have no idea. I, I got a feeling it's probably one of my buddies. Um, but yeah, I'll get back to him in a little bit. Anyways, we are getting off topic. Oh my god. Three minutes into the podcast, and we're already getting out of track. Woo! Alright. So, let's begin the episode review on this podcast. Uh, starting off with, well, the episode, and the episode begins right in Ponyville, the main place where, uh, well, the story takes off. So, um, we have Starlight and Trixie, um, who, uh, are putting together a picnic, or is putting together a picnic, um, and, uh, this is sort of a way for Starlight to ease from her deeds that she has at the school. And, um... I thought Trixie was putting up the uh, picnic. Well, Trixie is putting up the pr picnic, but, um, Starlight, this is supposedly something for her to get away from her normal doings at the school friendship. Um, yeah. so, yes. Uh, so... While, um, Trixie is putting this together, um, she's like, well, Starlight, you kind of do a lot of work at the school, you know, me and you haven't actually, actually had a really good time of hanging out with each other, um, and she's like, well, you know, since I am the student counsel for, uh, the student counselor for the school of friendship, um, I kind of have my deeds over there, and talking with students and their problems is sort of what I do here, so it's very important. 
uh, and also not unless I have this fancy um, bracelet too, which that bra that bracelet plays a very um, interesting role uh, throughout this episode. Um, it, it reminds me, when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, so it's got a Fitbit. All right, this is going good. And then uh, it goes off and flashes and all that. And um, yeah, that this is where it kind of starts getting to a point where, oh, I know where this episode's kind of headed. Um, but yeah, so while Trixie is putting together this picnic, uh, that bracelet goes off and um, so it's like, oh, Trixie, um, let me hold off on the picnic for a little bit. I'll just be right back. So she teleports back to the school um, and uh, yeah, she, she's she got, I think, Silverstream. Silverstream is the one that she mostly talks throughout this episode. Um, but then she starts seeing all these students, too, um, that are lined up literally outside of her door. She's just looking at them, <laughs> and, uh, uh, poor, poor Starlight, you know, all she's trying to have is a good time with her friend without any work, but, you know, uh, kind of being in a situation as, uh, the student counselor for the whole entire school, that's kind of the position she kind of signed up with. Uh, but this is where um, we go back with Silverstream and Starlight trying to figure out something because Silverstream is talking about her uh, relatives and what they have upcoming in uh, Sequestria. Which uh, I want to see more of Sequestria. You know, the, mo the movie and a few other places doesn't hold it. I want to see more of Sequestria, and especially this season, because this is the last one. So, um, yes. Alright, so, um, this is um, also where uh, Silverstream also starts talking about um, her research assignment on dangerous creatures um, in the Everfree Forest, uh, which we know how the Everfree Forest is. It's uh, it's very scary and dangerous, um, but that's not going to stop this uh, wonderful student. Uh, Silverstream is one of those ongoing students there at the School of Friendship uh, who loves... It doesn't matter. If it stares, she's impressed. If uh, it's something flying or something and it's a different creature, she's really impressed because, you know, being locked away underneath uh, the waters of... Um, Mount, uh, oh my god, I can't even think. Is it Mount Eris? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, her, yeah, I, I can't think of it right now. Again, guys, I'm out of it. Um, well, that's where the hippogriffs are. Yes, uh, the home of the hippogriffs, we're just gonna call it there. Um, yeah. so, yeah, <laughs> being locked away underneath in Sequestria, um, yeah, she's kind of that way. Not really too much anymore, but I remember that from when we saw her in Season 8. Um, so, um, this is where, um, Starlight quickly wraps up her session with Str Silverstream. Quickly, quote-unquote. Um, and this is where, uh, Trixie enters, uh, the office. Um, and she's trying to talk with Starlight, and then a student decides to enter, and, uh, Trixie kind of gives, uh, him the mean look, and, like, uh, okay, I'll, I'll let you two be. And then they start talking, and this is where Trixie says, okay, Starlight, you really need to get away from this. Can you not see, like, you're, you're not having any quality time, uh, with your friends and stuff. You're helping students, which is perfectly fine. It's just, don't you think it's getting a little bit ridiculous? And, um, this is where Starlight's like, yes, I understand, but this is my obligation to stay here at the, um, school of friendship and help these students with their problems. I can't just leave it behind. And, uh, 
this is kind of hard for Trixie to understand because, you know, Trixie is really good friends with Starlight and she wants to hang out with her as much as possible. Uh, so, yeah, it, this, this kind of brings up a little bit of a spark. Uh, but, um, this is where we head to, um, a party, which, uh, Trixie tells Starlight there's a party, um, with Mod Pie and Mudbriar, uh, Trixie's boyfriend, or Trixie's boyfriend, Mod's boyfriend, okay, there we go, um, <laughs> and they are throwing a spring, uh, I, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Um, something to celebrate spring. Uh, and this is where Starlight is um, very excited to go to. And uh, th she's like, okay, maybe, maybe this will actually work out. Maybe students will stop and I'll be good for a day. If they can just hold off for a little bit, maybe I'll be fine. Nope, doesn't stop there. Uh, her bracelet goes off and not even when the party even started really they just literally were talking um mudbriar mod and trixie they were just talking about things and the party hasn't even really started technically, uh, technically the party hasn't actually started yet you see starlight had her flashy bracelet go off and she had to leave are fun rocks and um festivities so um yeah that's uh that's basically what happened so uh thank you mod briar your your new nickname is now mod briar <laughs> mod briar mud briar yeah well mod briar it, it's shipped it's official so I, I i call that the ship name all right so um ship. It, it's the ship is already been sailed long time ago long time oh, ago i was just gonna make that yeah i got you <laughs> <laughs> all right um so uh moving on. moving on um as our ship sails away uh we have <laughs> starlight and trixie um heading into town to complete a to-do list uh, for the party, um, cause Starlight had to go talk with one of the students, which more than likely was, uh, Silverstream in this case, because Silverstream really needs, um, Starlight's help, uh, with this project, and, uh, figuring out a few other situations, so, um, yes, but she returns back with Trixie, and, um, Trixie has a to-do list. Now, Starlight is supposed to get a few items, as well as Trixie, so they can go to Mod's party, um, and, you know, enjoy themselves. Um, so, this is including a special cake recipe from Mrs. Cake, um, which Starlight is supposed to get. Um, Starlight then suggests that they split up so they can collect the items, um, and save time uh, so while this is happening and they're planning this out um, she is unable to complete the task and uh, what do you think happens her bracelet goes off again no I don't know but Starlight has to go and answer it see who it is and um, so this ends up being a very big um, big sign to Trixie that, yeah, Starlight's not going to be able to do anything. So what the heck, I, I might as well just do the stuff for her. Uh, I can't keep on doing this. So she goes to the cakes uh, to get that special recipe and a few other things. Uh, that Starlight was supposed to do while Starlight is back at the school listening to Silverstream. Uh, so, yes. Um, but as uh, this happens and all that, um, Starlight is finally done with her session with Silverstream, and Silverstream's basically done talking about everything. Um, it's very late, yeah. and why, why a dab? <laughs> <laughs> just a random dab just 
<laughs> I, I just you just made me dab. So yeah. Alright. Um so with this being said, it's very late, kinda like how it is right now. Um and uh Starlight goes to the cakes, uh sugar cube corner in this case, um, to see Mrs. Cake to ask her about that special recipe. Mrs. Cake replies saying, um, well, I think Trixie, your friend, already uh, got it for you, so it's all taken care of. And Starlight kind of feels a little bit um, upset about herself. Um, and then this is where, um, when she's talking with Mrs. Cake and kind of feeling bad, her bracelet goes off once again. Um, and uh, Starlight's just like, oh, I'm, I'm about done over this. Well, to her surprise, it's not who she thinks it is. It is, in fact, Trixie. Trixie yeah. is the one who comes into the office and says, all right, Starlight, we need to talk. And uh, this is where Starlight's like, oh, my gosh. She's like, Trixie, I am so, so sorry. You know, I... I, as you know, I have my job here, and I just can't abandon the position and stuff. And Trixie then kind of puts a rough road um, ahead of twi uh, Starlight, not Twilight, um, saying that, you know, if we're going to make things work out, you need to give this thing for a break. Uh, because you have that thing around your hoof going off. You're not gonna get anything accomplished with ours, whatever we need to do. Um, so this is where um, so it's like, you know what, Trixie, you're right. I have been doing too much with this, and maybe you're right. Maybe I need to get rid of this bracelet or just leave it at um, my desk and uh, forget about it. Forget about it for a day. Let's go enjoy this party at Mods because that's what we were planning on doing. So Trixie is now really happy that Starlight is taking a bit of a risky step uh, with leaving uh, her important job at the school um, to go to a party so they can enjoy themselves. Well, um, this is definitely risky. Definitely risky for her, um, but she is at the party with um, Maud, uh, Mudbriar, uh, Trixie, and then we have um, Sunburst, uh, which uh, we don't see. Sunburst. We don't see Sunburst much, uh, so it's nice that we Sunburst. see him. <laughs> every every time I think of Sunburst, I think of Starburst. <laughs> Starburst. Starburst. <laughs> Explainably juicy. Uh, anyway, this is not an ad for Starburst, so this is uh, Sunburst, so yes. Alright, so um, <laughs> with uh, this being said, um, Starlight is at um, the party enjoying herself uh, with the others, and then we get an unexpected uh, visitor. Um, now, he I forget his name. I'm trying to think. And yes, I was correct. It is Mount Arist. So uh, yes, it just told me here. So I was right. I was right. I was. I was good. Um. But uh, yes. Yeah, so we have Silverstream's younger brother who is now on the look for Silverstream. Um. So Silverstream tried to go into um. Uh, Starlight's office to, you know, talk with her more. Um, but notice she wasn't in her office, or nowhere to be found in the School of Friendship. So Silverstream kind of feels bad, and uh, she's like, well, she's like, I guess I'm not going to get any help on this, so I guess I'm on my own. And Silverstream kind of goes away. Well, she's gone for quite a long time. And uh, this then concerns um, her younger brother, um, who is now looking for Silverstream. So she starts; he starts looking for Starlight, um, and eventually finds her at Maud's place uh, with Mudbriar and Sunburst, um, and then says, "Hey, uh, Starlight, 
Uh, Silverstream hasn't come home for quite a while now. And Starlet's like, wait, what are you talking about? She isn't with you guys? And he's like, no, she's been gone for uh, a long time. And she probably thinks you're ignoring her in a way. And this is where Starlight now kind of feels bad and kind of bites herself for uh, leaving her position as the student counselor because that's her job. And now that she's kind of a part of the problem, she, this is, this is now her fault. She's got to fix this and make it right. So she decides, all right, I'm going to look for Silverstream. I'll be back. And then Trixie's like, Starlight, she, he, I'm sorry. And Starlight's like, well, she's like, as long as we can get through this and find Silverstream and stuff, you know, I don't, I don't blame you fully for what has happened, but... Yeah, this this was a big mistake. I never should have listened to you, Trixie. And she's like, well, I kind of understand you because this is very concerning. Uh, so, you know, and this is kind of, this is one of those moments where I actually like, you know, Trixie, um, Trixie is known for, you know, kind of wanting to be the show-off pony. We've known this for a long time. And actually see her kind of like care about this situation actually puts more towards her character, I think. Um, you know, and I think we definitely seen a lot of that too with Starlight and her bond come together in uh, a few other episodes that we saw um, in like season eight. Um, so yeah, it, it's kind of nice seeing the side of uh, Trixie, uh, not just her Trixie ways, the great and powerful Trixie ways, I should say. Great. It's a great and powerful Trixie! I can't do it, but... Yeah, make it, that R roll. Trixie! I could go Grrrr, but I can't go Trixie. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I, I can't even do the R. Yeah, I can't roll my R's. Um, but I can kind of roll my G's, but... Um, yeah. So, um, this is where Starlight and the rest of the crew, uh, kind of go looking for, um, Silverstream. And, uh, the first place they look is, well, the School of Friendship. Uh, so, they, uh, Starlight basically flies all throughout the school, teleports in the library, um, in her office, and, uh, other places. And then this is where... Um, her younger brother suggests, have you checked her room? And Starlet's like, you might be on to something. So they go, check her room, and uh, of course she's not there. But, there is some very helpful stuff in her room. Uh, Silverstream has a book laid out, and a few other things that are pinned up on the wall, um, going towards her project. And, uh, her project is, um... Uh, her research notes on uh, cockatrice, uh, which are those weird chicken slash dragon. Like it, they remind me of little discords. I don't know why, because they're half animal and stuff. I think you guys know where I'm coming from. But uh, these things uh, we've seen way back in previous episodes. These things turn. Um, if you look at them, they turn you into stone. Uh, which is not good. So now they're kind of even more concerned because, you know, does Silverstream really know what she's doing? Uh, so we, we need to look. And so now that they got kind of a way of looking into what uh, or where Silverstream may be, the only place to find those weird creatures are in the Everfree Forest. So, they go to the Everfree Forest. Um, and, uh, this is where Trixie decides, you know what? I'm gonna lead the way. And, uh, so I was like, you really know your way around the Everfree? And she's like, oh, please, the great and powerful Trixie can do anything. So there's Trixie, once again, her 
self <laughs> that we've known and loved, um, also hated, but mostly loved. Um, so, yes. So, Trixie, after a while, um, this is where she kind of looks around. She's like, okay, we're going to go this way. Licks the ground, um, smells certain areas and stuff. Uh, to pinpoint her way to where these possible um, cockatrays uh, live. Um, so this is where, uh, after a while, them just going around and around in circles, zigzag, um, they they're still in the same position. And this is where so it's like, okay, Trixie, do you really know where you're going? And then then Trixie says. Really? No, I don't know. I'm just kind of, you know, guessing. And Starlet's like, we don't have time for that. We need to find Silverstream. And, uh, this is where we have, um, I think Sunburst kind of looks up something in her, uh, Silverstream's book and tells, uh, the location of where Cockatrice would be. And, uh, so they go to that specific area, and um, there, lo and behold, there's a lot of them, a lot. Um, so uh, yeah, they're kind of concerned now because they're really hoping Silverstream isn't in that mess. Um, and then this is where Starlight says, "Oh God, they spotted us." Um, don't look at them. So all of them close their eyes and kind of walk. And they kind of get lost uh, with each other, and then eventually they regroup back up, and um, this is where um, they're like, oh, um, are we alright? And um, they're like, yes, we're fine, um, but we have no sign of Silverstream anywhere. And uh, they're regrouped at the Castle of the Two Sisters. So they got out of the field where the cockatrees were in the shade trees, um, and now they're at the castle of the two sisters. So while they're talking talking amongst themselves, um, one of them spots. Well, I think Trixie spots. Might be Trixie or um, I don't know. I don't know if it was Trixie or Sunburst. No, I think it was Maud. I think Maud uh, points out uh, the. Oh wait. No, it was Mudbriar. Was it Mudbriar? No, Mudbriar was turned to stone. stone. Mudbriar was turned to stone, yeah. and I forgot to mention that. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, yes. So while they were looking and all that, um, and they regrouped, they found out Mudbriar. Uh, looked at one of them and he's turned to stone and Maud obsessed over him he's like mm, never thought I could love him even more and I'm just like oh my god Maud <laughs> uh, but you gotta love oh. her as well um, yeah, but uh... anyway one of them points out um, what the crazy looking crystally tree looking thing is which is if you know from uprooted is uh the the tree of um the tree house of harmony the tree house of harmony it's not the tree of harmony anymore no 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 um so uh this is where so it's like oh that's nothing that's just the uh the kids or the students is tree house saying that grew out of the ground from the tree of heart and she's like oh she's like good thinking all right why why didn't i think of that all right let's go there which you know this this was kind of a little bit predictable um i kind of predicted it myself uh when they were in the everfree forest i kind of figured where silver stream may be um because you know the tree told them that anytime they were feeling upset about something or they didn't feel like um or feel comfortable anywhere they could always go there and so i kind of had a feeling silverstream kind of made her way all the way to uh the treehouse of harmony uh which lo and behold she's there 
right there looking and researching with uh, one of the cockatrice, uh, or the cockatrice. Um, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. I don't think I am. Uh, but this one is actually pretty friendly. Um, it won't turn anyone into stone. Um, and this cockatrice is named Edith. So Silverstream gave um, the creature a name. So it was really awesome, I thought. Uh, so um, Silverstream said that uh, she needed this creature to help her finish her assignment. And then this is where Starlight then goes saying, Silverstream, I apologize for not being in my office. Uh, I should have been more of a responsible student counselor and stayed and had my bracelet on, which I didn't. And that's why you couldn't get a hold of me or anything. And Silverstream is like, it's all right. I understand you have things to do as well as I am, you know. Just because you're, you help out other ponies and stuff, you know, kind of have a life too. So it's kind of one of those moments where you see uh, teachers outside of your school and you see them in like, I don't know, a grocery store or something like that. And you're like, oh, that's kind of weird. That's my teacher. She's, uh, she goes to the same grocery store as me. Or you see her at a shoe store or something like that. Or he. I don't know. But I've had many of those moments happen. And yeah, it's kind of weird. But uh, I know they have lives too. So uh, this kind of goes in with that. Um, you know, Starlight, yes, she does have uh, other things she wants to do and some things she has to attend. But most importantly, she has to get uh, this done first. Uh, her, her student council comes first, as Trixie understands and the rest of them do. Uh, so um, after that, back at Maud's place, uh, Mudbriar is turned back uh, to his regular self, and um, this is where her brother, uh, Silverstream's brother, uh, says thank you for returning her and finding her. It uh, really, I really appreciate it a lot, and um, this is where Starlight still feels like she's failed as a student counselor. And uh, this is where um, her friends tell her that she can't be devoted to everything. Um, and we, they understand, you know, when she has to go on duty, she has to do it. Uh, there's no backing out of it. Yeah. But at the same time, she does deserve a break. And so it's not really her fault in the end. Um, but this is where Starlight uh, decides to set a schedule. Good thinking, Starlight schedule it definitely keeps you on track so you don't have things mixed up and creates a whole craziness so basically a schedule solves uh, the episode and uh, this is where um, Silverstream agrees to uh, oh my gosh sorry my phone's going off um, this is where <laughs> Silverstream agrees to see uh, Starlight only for really important things, not coming to her for every single little thing, but only if she really, truly needs it. I know she needs support, but I think her friends that she's got, she can go to. And, uh, yeah. So with that, uh, the friends are at Mod celebrating and uh, having a good time, and that's basically where the episode ends. Oh, all right, wow, yeah, claps. yeah, um, <laughs> claps, good job. Clap, 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 clap. All right, clap on, clap off. Uh, so, um. Yeah, I thought this was actually a pretty decent episode. Um, it certainly was. I, I, I really liked it, you know. We saw some characters we haven't seen in a while. Definitely Mod and Mod Briar. Um, and then uh, it was nice to get um, a Trixie slash Starlight mm -hmm. episode again. Yes, technically it was splendid is my word <laughs> choice. Uh, <laughs> I love Mud Mudbriar. I keep saying it, Mod Briar, but uh, I, again, the ship, as we talked about in this episode, it has sailed. It's 
vanilla, it's canon. People, you cannot argue. This is the actual uh, episode, and this is how it is. So, uh, no one can get mad at me for it because it's official, it's vanilla, and no one can say it's not. Uh, just like, I, bring in another episode in here. Um, for the people who said Starco would never be a thing, um, kind of happened. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, th this was a very tasteful episode. I really appreciated it. Um, it, I, I like this one. I, I, I don't know if it was supposed to be a filler or anything. It did not feel like a filler. It felt like a good length episode, uh, that kind of brought a story together it brought old characters uh together as well that we've seen in previous seasons um and they need to keep doing more of this uh so yeah but with that rainbow do you have anything to add what's that do you have any uh thing to add uh with saying this uh what you liked and what you didn't like or Something I'm you not, felt I'm like we left out. I really, I'm, a, I'm a nothing I really disliked. I, I pretty much like pretty much every step of the way. Okay. All right. That's fair. All right. All right. Cool. Um. It was nice to see you again. It, it definitely was. It definitely was. Um. Uh, I really, I really enjoyed this episode. Every bit of it, like you said. Um. I didn't have any problems with it. So yeah. But, uh, honestly, guys, I think that's all we have to talk about in this podcast. We basically covered, uh, everything about it. Um, so, yeah, every inch, every inch of this episode, I think we, uh, talked about pretty well. Even though I was kind of a little bit, uh, wonky on the first beginning portion of it, but, you know, it is what it is. It's a podcast. We're here to discuss and be silly and goofy, and that's what it's all about. So, with that being said, that is a wrap with this episode of the Pony Talk Podcast. Thank you all so much for watching. Please, give this video a like, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe, guys. And, if you haven't already, make sure you click that notification bell to keep updated with the channel, because we got more future podcasts coming your way. We're still one more behind, uh, soon to be two more behind, because tomorrow is, um the season, uh, the mid-season finale, um, so we're reaching that hiatus point, so, uh, we'll get that other half of the season, um, whenever it comes out, uh, which seems like it's gonna be a really good, uh, episode, so, uh, yes, and if you guys want to join the Pony Talk podcast, we got, you know, we got a few more episodes, this upcoming one which uh the next episode will be the last crusade uh which i hear is a really good episode as well i haven't watched it precisely myself uh so i could keep updated but uh yeah so um we'll be doing that uh podcast really really soon and um we're just gonna keep cranking these out for you guys podcast and more videos for you so definitely stay tuned um, but yes, if you want to join the podcast before the hiatus hits or, uh, you want to sign up for the other half of season nine, you're more than welcome to, uh, it's up for you and you guys only to decide. But with that being said, thank you so much, Rainbow, uh, for joining me on this Pony Talk podcast. Anytime. Thank you. Uh, and again, you're more than welcome to join us cause we're probably going to do something a little bit big for the mid season finale. Um, because it seems like it's going to be in a big episode. I don't know. Um, season 8, it had a pretty good uh, mid-season finale. The Mean Six. Oh, that was, that was yeah. good. I really enjoyed that episode. Uh, but, yes. So, with that being said, that's all I have to say. So, thank you all so much for watching. And, as always, we'll see you in the next Pony Talk podcast when we come back to episode 12, The Last Crusade. Peace out, Everpony. Bye! Bye.